Good morning. morning. And welcome to Christ of the Hills United Methodist Church. So glad to see you here. This is the first of our three services, and so we're we're so happy that you are all really refreshed with that extra hour sleep you got and ready to worship as we gather together. And of course, others are worshiping with us as they join us online, and we welcome you all on this very, very special liturgical day that we know is All Saints Sunday, a very, very special Sunday. We have several guests with us, and we want to say how happy we are you've chosen to worship with us. We know you'll be blessed, and we certainly hope you'll come back and be with us as you have opportunity to do that. Now, just a couple of announcements before we go on. Number one, this Wednesday morning at 9.30, we have our annual charge conference. This is a time that the church council comes together and uh, does its annual business. We'll have our new district superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Ulysses Washington, will be here with us, so you'll have an opportunity to meet him. All church members are, of course, welcome to come and, uh, and be a part of that as well. And so remember that, Wednesday morning, 930. Then on Friday morning, the United Methodist Men's Breakfast meets, begins to gather around 745, but breakfast is at 8, $5.00. If you're a guest, that'll be the first time that you come to the men's breakfast. That's for free. And then, uh, so we have breakfast from 8 to 8.30, and then Dennis Simpson will be our program this week. That'll be a very interesting program. So we encourage you to come this Friday morning. One thing we want to mention, one week from today, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a wonderful uh, uh, blessing of the pets, and that was great weather outside. It was perfect. And now we're coming inside next Sunday at 2 o'clock, and we're going to have an all-creatures great and small pet memorial. So it's a remembrance service, honoring your way to honor your pet and to heal your heart. Uh, so you bring a photo or a memento. We, we got some liturgy that's very, very beautiful for that. So if you want to, in memory of a, of a special uh, pet, come and be with us next Sunday afternoon, the 12th, at 2 o'clock. I think you'll be blessed. If you're a member of the church, you received this week then uh, a card. This is November. We're in that annual stewardship campaign, that pledge campaign, the Count Me In campaign. So many different reasons that people stand up to say, you can count me in for my financial support of the church in the year 2024. And so uh, that uh, emphasis will be over the next three weeks. Two weeks from today, we'll have Commitment Sunday. I know some have already brought in their commitment cards for 2024 uh, and there there will be others mailing those in and so forth but two weeks from today we'll we'll bless those dedicate those to 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 the glory of God through his son Jesus Christ so a lot coming up in the church much more than that I encourage you always to take your ringer and look at the things that impact your lives and your faith walk as a part of Christ of the Hills United Methodist Church so again we welcome you All Saints Sunday, let's stand together as we join in our responsive call to worship. This coming from the book of 1 John chapter 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. What love? Yes. Hear this, though, that what we shall yet become is even more glorious, though it has not yet been revealed. Hallelujah. When Jesus is revealed, seeing him, we will be made like him, conform to his glorious image. One of the great hymns of all time, for all the saints, number 711, let's remain standing and sing God's praise.
Let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, yes, we celebrate. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Kirk and Lynn Inkholt in the memory of their son Ryan and by Webb and Phyllis Collins in celebration of their 45th wedding anniversary. Yes. Oh, you can give God praise. Come on now. Yeah. But we're not done. The Welcome Center flowers are given to the glory of God by Gina and Marla Phillips in celebration of their 65th wedding anniversary. Yeah, hey, praise be to God. And in the power of our God, we lift up these names. Our sympathy is extended to Pierce family on the death of Christ of the Hills member Lorraine Pierce and to Mike and Susan Sigelman on the death of Mike's nephew, Tim Sigelman. We also want to lift up, because today we have a group of, I believe, 16 going to Sager Brown. So keep them in your prayers as they go on this mission trip and to do the things that they are called to do. Also, we want to lift up Larry and Jeanette Kinkheim's grandson, Zeke. Uh, he's in the hospital, and also Christ of the Hills member, Sharon Temple. Uh, keep her in your prayers as well. On this All Saints Sunday, let us go before the Lord. We give you thanks, our Heavenly Father. First of all, thanks for you, O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your Holy Spirit. Thank you. We thank you, O God, on this All Saints Sunday for all the saints who ever worshipped you and who saints of today. For those who worshipped you in our traditional services, those who worshipped you from the choir loft, those who worshipped you from either the Matthew or the Mark or the Luke or the John sections of this church, and those in our contemporary worship service. My God, my God, we thank you. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the hardworking saints. Manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil. Strong hands and those gnarled with age. Holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. Those saints behind the scenes and those up front in leadership roles. Those saints who thought that they would be doing the same job for the rest of their lives, but in reality have shown the way for people coming in behind them. Maybe not doing the things exactly, but demonstrating grace to allow others ideas and ways to develop, emphasizing that the main task is to glorify you. And as we speak, we thank the saints who showed us what being in missions is all about as we pray for those who stepped up to volunteer in service at Sager Brown and are leaving today to serve you. We thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us 
Bless the memories of your saints, God. Bless the new traditions and the new memories that are to come. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, their examples of dedication and of worship and of love. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
Beautiful words. Thank you so much to our choir. That was, that was wonderful. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Revelation chapter 7, and I'll be reading verses 9 through 17. Here are these words from scripture. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger and no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please bow for our offertory prayer this morning. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, yours is the name that is above every name. And we bow our hearts before you and confess that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. This morning, we come to you with our hearts filled with gratitude for the abundant blessings you provide each day. We acknowledge that cheerful giving is not an obligation, but truly an act of worship. Remind us that our giving is an expression of our deep love for you, Lord. And we ask that you bless our tithes and offerings to further your kingdom and your kingdom's work. May your kingdom come. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, and soon and coming King. Amen. Amen.
please be seated. You'll see in the order of worship that I've offered the first two verses that Reverend Sheila read from that longer passage. After this, I looked. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. This is a, a great assembly, a great worship service in heaven, if you would. And they cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, the best in sight and sound. You will have noted in the printing and in the reading of our focus text this vision of heavenly worship that I've highlighted, sight and sound. Sight, after this I looked, and sound, they cried out in a loud voice. Worship, as John's revelation describes it from heaven, should be sensory. At its highest, at its most sublime, worship should engage, I think, not just the senses of sight and sound, but all five senses with which we were created and endowed by our Creator in the image of God. Sight and sound are perhaps the most obvious. What we see in worship should be inspirational, thought-provoking, meditative. And what we hear in worship should be instructional, challenging, praise. But let's not ignore the other three senses, touch, taste, and smell. Worship should always be a workout. And I use that word intentionally because it's an exercise of the Spirit a workout of I, all five senses with which God has endowed us. The sacrament of Holy Communion provides an opportunity to exercise all five of our senses, not just sight and sound, but also smell. You know, and Paul speaks of prayer as a sweet-smelling savor to God. That's why so many traditions use incense in their meditation and in their worship so that our olfactory senses are invited to come alive and touch. That's true every Sunday, really, when we gather here, from handshakes out with our greeters to fist bumps and, and hugs. But Holy Communion Sunday especially, when we press the bread into your hand and you feel the texture of the bread, touch and taste. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, the, the psalmist said. So sight and sound but also touch and taste and smell. But sight and sound, as my title suggests, are the two most obvious sensations, channels of sensation in worship. As we have seen, our lectionary text then from Revelation for All Saints Sunday describes the best in sight and sound. After this I looked, and what did I see? This great multitude ready to worship. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. I fashioned our call to worship in a way that sight and sound were also emphasized. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. What love. Hear this, that what we shall be is yet even more glorious when Jesus shall appear. So the best in sight and sound. Now, for Arkansas Razorback fans, <laughs> and what a great week to have the Razorbacks in my thought here. For Razorback fans, for those at least who attend home games, this is a very well-known phrase. This is the moniker by which the marching band is introduced in the pregame, every game. The best in sight and sound, the Arkansas Razorback Marching Band. I've attended Razorback games since I was about six years old in War Memorial Stadium over at Little Rock. And the, the older I get, the more important is the tradition-rich pregame ceremony. The game itself, you know, what di it differs with each team, each year, each coach, each squad. Sometimes it even differs from week to week as we've seen this, this year, hasn't it? And so uh, it can seem like there's a different team on the field this week from last week. But the pregame ceremony, tradition-rich, is more consistent. 
It evokes memories of games past. Uh, I, can, I can have the pregame warm-up and think all the way back to six years old when I was watching Lance Allworth, Bambi, on the field when I saw my very first Little Rock game. And on and on through the years, all the way to hopefully next week. <laughs> the band, the traditions, slower to change. New coach can come, a new scheme can come, and everything can be thrown haywire, but the band and the pregame ceremony, that anchors us down to something that's stable. The pregame connects them all, the teams that were great and the teams that were not so great. My family knows that I get awful nervous if it's taking too long to park and make our way through the crowd into the stadium. And it's not because I'm interested in watching players warm up. I don't care anything about that, but I can't miss the pregame marching band. What they do is so rich with tradition. In existence, they're practicing things in existence long before they were born, handed down to them. And the older I get, the more connection that that part of the ceremony has with my past. May even find a tear rolling down my cheek. And I'm serious, but then I, I cry at Geico commercials. <laughs> But they've practiced and they've practiced and they've practiced to get it right, like a church at Holy Communion, practicing what has been handed down to them. So, 15 minutes before the kickoff, the players hustle off the field for their pregame inspiration from their coach, and the band is set. All 350 members dressed sharply in red and white. This is not a casual coffee cup affair when you just show up in shorts and talk. All 350 crammed into the space of the south end zone. And then with the slow beat of the drum, like the procession in church, only two lines of the drummers and the cymbals take the field, advancing from the goal line to the 35-yard line, sort of like our procession in with our choir. And the stadium slowly hushes as the announcer when things are getting still, the anticipation mounting. And now turn your attention to the south end zone for the best in sight and sound, the Arkansas Razorback Marching Band. And the drum majors and majorettes lead them onto the field perfectly aligned, absolutely aligned. And that's the moment of our text. I look around and behold a great multitude is filled, right? And then you hear the words, and now Razorback fans stand up and call those hogs, right? And woo pig suey issues three times. There's that number three, it's magical. <laughs> and the band breaks into the fight song, and like the congregation singing its opening hymn of praise today for all the saints, that Razorback fight song is hymnic in its admonitions for saints to continue the struggle, just like what we sang with For All the Saints, calling for perseverance, never give up, hit that line, hit that line, keep on going. Words like give a cheer, never fear, never yield, on your toes to the finish, carry on with all your might, fight, fight, fight. That's a fight song, right? And it is, as I said, very hymnic. It reminds me of Hebrews chapter 12 a passage we always remember at All Saints Day, seeing we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all of our loved ones who have gone before us. Let us throw off everything that hinders us. Let's discipline ourselves, lose the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, our great coach, looking unto Jesus who went before us, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Keep on going, never yield, carry on, fight, fight, fight. That's why I love that hymn for all the saints. Oh, may thy soul, you just sang this, oh, may thy soldiers, faithful, true, and bold, fight as the saints who nobly fought of old and win with them the victor's crown of gold. Alleluia. Hallelujah. And when the strife is fierce, because life can get tough, and when the strife is fierce, the warfare long steals on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Well, in Razorback land, we call it hogaloo. <laughs> and it ends with that flying A that creates two channels, one for the offense and one for the defense, to rush onto the field with all the inspiration that that music can bring. Everything we do in worship is tradition-rich, pre-game, intended to give us the energy to take the field. In other words, we're the players. Church changes all the time. Every year, the team looks a little different. We add members. We remember members who have gone beyond. Sometimes there's changes in administration, coaches, team. So every year, the team may look different, but the traditions are the same. So that we rush onto the field. That is to say, the living, the daily living of our life. And we are inspired by these traditions that enrich us. But we're always a team and always one. Not just with those who are in the sanctuary today, but with those who have gone on before. And that's why I love that verse. And that's when, we, when Ruth quits playing and we sing it a cappella because I want to implant that into your heart and mind. Oh, blessed communion. Fellowship divine. We feebly struggle. They in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must be thinking a lot about our memorial garden because the last two weeks I've mentioned it, and today I want to mention it one more time with a word of pastoral privilege here that walking up there and seeing those names, meditating as a pastor who's been there so many times and helped so many families lay a loved one to rest there, and to read those names again, that's one of the great advantages of being a pastor of a church for a while, and I'm in my seventh year now, that when you read those names and you, it's the best in sight and sound in a different way. I can see their faces, and I can hear their voices, some of the conversations we've had, maybe some of the Bible studies we've had, some of the conversations in the office or in their home that we might have had. And it's the best in sight and sound. And that's what All Saints Sunday is to be for us. The best in sight and sound as we remember our loved ones, just as the choir sang, Jesus wants us to remember Him. But to remember our loved ones, and to know that we are all one. Now, I've played on my tradition. I know there are other traditions here. I know we have some Texas Longhorn fans. I know we have some Wisconsin Badgers up there. I know we have some Jayhawks out there. I know we have other teams. And I know we have some old Penn State. I'm not going to forget you, Carol. And Ohio State. And I know you all have your own tradition. As a matter of fact, I'll never forget seeing the Ohio State pregame band at the Sugar Bowl down in New Orleans several years ago, about 10 years ago now, I guess. And I was amazed. It was like a Methodist had gone to an Episcopalian church, and we saw how they really do big church. When they made that cursive Ohio State out there on that field, it was absolutely incredible. So I, I hope you get my point. Nothing to do with the Razorbacks. Nothing to do with your team, but everything to do with the soul and the spirit. There's a reason they call it the spirit squad. Hebrews chapter 12, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, they are our spectators. They've already played the game. They've won the victory. The traditions have been passed down to us. We feebly struggle. They in glory shine. So that today our worship we turn to the stands, as it were, that great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, and we salute them and see them as the best in sight and sound as we hear their voices and as we remember. And they, we do that here with the sight as we read the names today. You're going to light a candle, and you'll have sight, and we'll ring the bell, and you'll have sound. Today's service is the best in sight and sound. And as your loved one's name is read, 
We invite you to stand in their memory. We invite others in the congregation to stand in loving memory of those who were your very special friends and whose memory gives you joy in seeing them in your head and, and hearing their voice again. You're welcome to stand at that time uh, as well. But we'll be reading the names of all of our church members who have gone on from the church, what we call the church militant, to the church triumphant since last year on All Saints Sunday. And then at the end, we'll also be, be lighting a candle just so that you can have sight and sound memory of those other loved ones, maybe, because our church members have all had loved ones who have gone on who weren't members of our church, but they're in your heart today, and they're not absent at all. They're part of that great cloud of witnesses. So please turn in your hymnals now to page 12 for the great thanksgiving. <coughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and God of the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus took the bread and blessed it. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and blessed it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ will die, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, 
that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. Renew our communion with all your saints and especially those that we name now before you. You may stand with your loved ones' names being lifted up. Pat Morrow. Frank McCollin. Melba George. Nell Rivers. Dave Sales. Marlis Dimry. Helen Seacats. Mike Matthews. Martha Blaine. Harriet Reynolds. Katie O'Neill. Annette Scarborough. Kenneth Batchelor. Ron Alville. Howard Freeland. Jake Christofferson. Lorraine Pierce. And now Kenny is going to light another candle because all of us have lost loved ones and some very close this year. So let us light this candle in remembrance of them. Amen. The best in sight, the best in sound as we remember our loved ones and see these tributes to them and hear the bell in their honor. I invite our ushers now and servers who will be coming uh, to help serve Holy Communion to come. We will be receiving Holy Communion by intinction today to take the bread and to dip it into the chalice. If you're a guest here, you can follow the ushers. Uh, if, if you'd prefer not to take the, the, uh, the, the bread and dip it into the chalice, we will have at the front and at the back individual uh, packets that you can take and receive Holy Communion. Uh, if you cannot move, if you're not mobile, just stay where you are, and at the end we'll bring the elements to you. But we'll have two stations at the front and two stations at the back, and the ushers will direct you to the right station.
Are there any we need to bring the elements to? Holy God, we give you thanks for this opportunity on All Saints Sunday to see our loved ones in our hearts, our minds, our imaginations, to hear the bell tolled in their honor, to hear their voices, to remember them as having joined that great cloud of witnesses inspiring us to continue to live a life honoring to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, our hymn is Forward Through the Ages. It's uh, not 534. Let's turn to 555, okay? 555, and let's stand together for our closing hymn.
I'll go out in Fellowship Hall and enjoy the sights and sounds of coffee and cookie and one another as we celebrate together. Would you receive this benediction? And now go forth in the might of your Lord Jesus Christ, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Amen. Let us join hands as we sing the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father. 